Kyle Shanahan spoke first. And since me and you last talked, his plan at quarterback has changed a little bit. Last year, it was it's Trey Lance. It's the end of story. Now, it's Brock Purdy or it's a three-way competition. Uh, how do you read Kyle Shanahan entering year seven of his tenure, his plan at quarterback? So I think they've, you know, it's we've talked about the quarterback ad nauseum, right? Like you and I take a year's hiatus and still it's almost the same. It's the same topic. It's it's the same topics. You just are exchanging the characters of who's involved. Mm -hmm. Now we're removing the Jimmy Garoppolo character and now, you know, throwing Sam Darnold into the picture. Right. But um, I think the one thing that's been consistent with the 49ers is that they've always attempted to try and find a quarterback. And I think that that's the one thing they haven't gotten enough credit for in what they've done, because they've fumbled the bag with this quarterback situation pretty much at every turn. The one thing they've always been good about is identifying, hey, we don't have the best possible option. So let's do what we can to try and find the best possible option. Now, you don't get credit for trying, but in this case, I'm crediting them for trying. Now, yeah, they've, they've, think, they've overturned a lot of stones. Give them credit. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. They've never ruled out any possibilities, as one might say. But I think the biggest thing I, I learned today, watching all three quarterbacks talk to the media, seeing how all three of their demeanors are, and seeing how jolly Kyle Shanahan was. One, he's relishing this entire idea of a quarterback competition. And two, I think he's supremely confident in his team being successful, regardless of which one of the three guys is his quarterback. That's the key, right? Deep down, he feels it doesn't matter. That's got to be his thinking. Exactly. Exactly. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And and you can see that, right? You can see that in his demeanor with the way he answers questions about all of them. He has a level of confidence that all of them could be it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And what's interesting is like the dance he has to play is – you got to pick one and you got to get the team to back that one. Right. That's the tough one. And I feel like that's where this offseason quarterback competition comes into play. Yeah. And I think when we, when it's a great segue right there, when you bring up the quarterback competition. So I'm a skeptic of the concept of having a quarterback competition. Right. I've never seen the quarterback posi- competition work besides when in Seattle, when they open it up in training camp and then you get one guy playing week one and usually the other guy plays by week five and by week 10, the team is moving on to a third string quarterback because neither of those guys are the guy. That's what usually happens. I think the key to the Niners quarterback competition is to have somebody be anointed as the guy before week one and be behind him. So whether that's Brock Purdy returning healthy, I think if he Mm -hmm. returns healthy, they will anoint him and be fully behind him. Yep. But if he doesn't return healthy, I think whoever wins the competition between Trey Lance and Sam Darnold, you shouldn't have a short leash on them if they yep. have a poor week one or a poor week two. And I think they learned a little bit of something from bringing Garoppolo back last year. The palpable tension, as Tim Kawakami called it, that in the lock after what happened in week one, I think that they don't want to create that situation for whomever's playing quarterback. I think they want the team to Agreed. solely be a um, – Uh, following him and if there's one thing we can credit Jimmy Garoppolo for he wasn't the greatest quarterback but the team always had a hundred percent belief in him at uh, John Lynch would say they were convicted in him convicted right and so he's gone and so now I mean they know they can win with Brock but he might not play week one they don't know they can win with Trey they don't know that they can win with Darnold so it seems like I I gotta give Kyle credit I always nitpick him it's fun to do but I think he's in this conundrum like I don't care which quarterback it is but my players do And they have opinions. And if I just pick one, some are going to disagree with me. So why don't I make this a competition and roll the balls out and make it as fair as possible and let some one of them win? I don't freaking care, man. If it's Sam Darnold, fine. Fine. As long as everyone sees it happen, as long as it doesn't feel forced, because I think that's one of the things that happened last year. It felt a little forced. You know, we didn't we didn't so. talk it through because we, we weren't streaming during the offseason, but no. like the fact that Kyle had to bring in the leaders of the team and say, Hey guys, right, can you support Trey? Like that's he's not doing that with any the of the quarterbacks this year. To Jay Glazer two weeks right. later. Probably not from Kyle. No. <laughs> Probably from one Lynch. of the players. Right. So I think he may have learned that la- like from last year, like, hey man, that didn't work. And uh, you know, I don't want to be going back and forth between quarterbacks this year. Let's let one of these guys, let's let the team pick a quarterback. 
essentially. Here, here's, you guys pick here's it. Here's my question, though. Here's my yeah. question. I think this works if there's a guy that's definitively the guy. But I think what you and I also agreed right. what if there's a hung the conversation jury? is that yeah. when you really stack up the skill sets of these guys all together and what we project them doing next year, we if I said the 49 – Jesse Naylor always does this exercise, right? Yeah. If I said yeah. the 49ers are going to the NFC Championship game – and I told you the quarterback was Sam Darnold. Would you be surprised if I said it no. was Trey Lance? Would you be surprised if I said Not it was Brock Purdy? Would you be surprised? Exactly. Not in the least. And so when the margins are this close, perhaps, right. in our opinion between these quarterbacks, like what if it's not definitive who the winner is? What if half the locker room believes one That's guy's tough. the winner? What if half the locker yeah. room believes the other guy's the winner? And it backfires. The and the whole, the whole thing backfires, that, right? Because yeah. you haven't yeah. gotten consensus. And whoever ends up starting hasn't gotten enough reps so that's how it backfires right there. So hopefully that doesn't happen. I mean, that's to me why Trey Lance got all the first team reps today. It wasn't like an even split. The idea is, Trey, you're going to win this job. That's the way I look at it. Trey, you're going to win this job unless Brock comes back. Um, Sam Darnold starting week one is like the la the like the worst case scenario. But they'll do it if they have to. I mean, I got to give right. Kyle credit for that. Like, hey, I'll it's Trey. If if you if if it's your finger, your knee, your 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 ankle, whatever, um, we're going to go with Sam. But I think this is it's, it's it's a runway. It's a clear highway for oh, Trey to get this job. There's no yeah. benefit. What happens if Sam Darnold starts and plays well the entire season? You have to pay him money. You have to make a decision on what you're going to do That's with true. all of them, right? That's true. You you have Trey Lance. If he starts and plays great the entire year, he was your third it's overall easier. pick. You were already committed to this. Great. If it's Brock Purdy, you were already committed to that. And I great. think that's where yeah. I think that's where I have been saying that this entire offseason, the best possible scenario for the 49ers is that Trey Lance takes the leap. He's the number one guy. It's clear to everybody. And he just takes the job from week one and just that's it's his job. And everybody knows. Or, he's the or Brock comes back for the beginning of training camp, tears it up. You never knew he got hurt and whatever. Was, like one of those two. One of those two. I was just yeah, about yeah. to say that. I think Sorry. that needs to be thrown in that one. Yeah. In that conversation for sure. 100% as well. Because if he comes back and tears it up, what he did for eight games, everybody's already like, okay, he's the guy. And then it just makes it a perfect segue. There's no quarterback controversy. There's no conversation from, you know, everybody week four, who should be starting week three. Should they bench the quarterback week right. five? Cause I, I don't think it's going to be smooth sailing at the beginning of the year for any of these guys. Cause it's never is for the 49ers offense. And you know what Kyle doesn't want? He doesn't want to be starting a guy week one, benching him week three, having whispers going to Mike Silver about, I don't know about this guy. It's what, that's, that's, will, that's a season that's going to be a disaster. A team. You can say we're a better team. Yeah, all that stuff. Right. Like, he, that's, that, you can't have that. So, whoever starting week one, you, we've seen Kyle, like, he benched Brian Hoyer in 2017. Other than that, he doesn't necessarily bench quarterbacks. He'll ride with them, even if they have a losing record midway through the season. Like, right. it's kind of cool. So, whoever he picks week one, if it's Brock, it's going to be Brock. If Brock's not ready week one and he goes with Trey, then it's Trey's job until he gets hurt or he's just freaking awful. Right. That's the way I read it. Like, there is a little bit of urgency on Brock's part. Like, if you want to play this year, it's week one. Right. Not right. week four. If you want to play, it's week one. Otherwise, it's out of my hands. It's out of your hands. We'll right. It turns into, yeah. well, whatever's happening at the moment. And even for Brock yeah. Purdy's return, the further – because Kyle Shanahan, I thought the most important thing he said today – was that Brock Purdy's projected return is at a certain point, but his actual return has to be whatever time before that, right? So if right. we project his return week one, then we're assuming he's at least getting a month of that last part of the offseason, which is something. It's not everything, it's something. If the projected return turns into week four, week five, week six, do you think they're going to have time to integrate him and get his rhythm timing and everything back? Because they'll be preparing for the season. The majority of his reps to get his groove back will be coming on scout team, right? In that yes. scenario. So it's like, yes. how do you integrate him completely back in the fold? Because as well as he played at the end of last season, he went through the entire OTA, rookie minicamp, minicamp, training camp, all of that process healthy and getting every rep that they gave him. Now, he didn't get that many reps, but he still got every rep that they gave him. And he was able to work on his game that way. Also, last thing I, I want to say about this before we move on. Um, I do think Kyle is open with to any of the quarterbacks coming back. Um, but I do think he has a preference, and I think it's Brock. I could yeah. be wrong. I mean, Brock, in the sense that he's the least unknown, like they tore it up with Brock. They won playoff games with Brock. I think you could hear when he, 
was this your impression? It was my impression when he was talking today. He's kind of saying like, yeah, like, we think Brock's going to be there. Like, Brock's going to be there week one. Like, that's the expectation. Like, I don't know if he's putting pressure on Brock or he's trying to speak it into existence, but I think he's not trying to go to plans B and C right now. I think in his mind, Brock's going to be there. You know what I thought was interesting? He compared Brock and Sam Darnold and the way they play and their playmaking and the way they make plays off schedule. And you saw how he provided the difference between a dual threat Yep. And between the two yep. mobile quarterbacks and he compared yep. the two and he's called the other one a dual threat. And you yep. know what's even That's why about? I said when they when they signed Darnold, I'm like, oh, well, this is Purdy's backup. If they wanted Lance's backup, they would have signed Mari they would have signed Mariota like the Eagles did from exactly. Hurts. Exactly. And it, it's yeah. funny because I was listening to Chris Sims' top forty quarterback rankings yesterday, which came out and had Sam Darnold at twenty seven and Brock Purdy at twenty six and Trey Lance wasn't featured on the list. And he, he could be higher. About, he could be higher. He, he could be higher. About, no, he said he's not on the list already. Oh. <laughs> but when we, he was talking about Brock Purdy at the time, you know what he said? What? He said Brock Purdy and Sam Darnold are basically the same guy, except Sam Darnold's bigger. Sam tired. Darnold's got a little stronger arm. He's a little more athletic. And he did say, to Brock Purdy's credit, he's a much better decision maker. And he seems to Much more goals, confident. But, it's but so it's a, apparent. Sam Darnold, yeah, we're going to talk about him course. in a minute, but he does not project confidence, in my opinion. I, I just thought that comparison back to back from the Very best funny. friends. Come Very on, funny. That was funny. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I can see it. Fort Niners daddy says Grant and Vish back Niners Super Bowl confirmed. But do they win it? It's true. Actually, we'll see. Grant and I had a six Started event after. season, then an NFC yep. championship game season, and then an NFC true. championship game when we didn't stream. So who knows? I don't know. I don't know. The coach has burned the boats. Yeah, they gotta that they gotta pick one quarterback and stick with him. Tony, thank you, thank you. Barry Baller, it's double goat. Hit him with a double goat. What's up, Barry Baller? That's a goat uh, himself. On Hell Tapia says, "Just made my day. Glad to see you back together. You just made my day too, Angel. Thank you very much." <laughs> 